Thanks for staying with us. So, AK, I'm going to come to you. What did you find for us in the news today? Okay, so what I found in the news is very troubling. Um, I, I'm, I'm troubled and at the same time I'm upset. In fact, I really can't put a finger on my emotions. So it's from the Tribune, and it says that uh, we can't stop Boko Haram in 20 years, Buratai. Now, we're all aware, for those of us that know, that this was the immediate, or this is the immediate past chief of army staff, Taku Yusuf Buratai. Mm. Now, he has been... Um, he had been nominated to be a non-career ambassador. And during when the Senate was interviewing him, and he, he made this very troubling, from, to me it's really troubling, because how can you even predict that? And remember, around this time two years ago, it was the same man that opened his mouth to tell us that Boko Haram was defeated mm -hmm. in 2016. Mm -hmm. And that what they were doing, we were just mopping up the little activities that were happening in seven, and then you come. The same you now, because you have just changed um, job rules. Mm -hmm. You're coming to tell us that in the next 20 years. It's really, it's annoying and it's very upsetting to me and it's also troubling. How can you predict this? And you're citing things like poor infrastructure, um, um, lack of Western education in the northern place, in the northern areas. So people are really indoctrinated by this idea. Are these new problems, Uwa? Are? are these new problems? Did they just emerge? after you left office. Mm. So it's for me, it's really, it's really, really upsetting. I'd rather he didn't make that statement or what, what really, I can't find it, but I feel really upset reading this news. You just come and all of a sudden, because you're not there again, all these things just become new to you. Why didn't you say it when you were there? <laughs> What's the hope you're giving he us? Couldn't have, he couldn't have said the same thing, but I, I think I want to agree with him based on the structure on ground, right? You know that where we are right now in our educational system is retrogressive, right? We're not improving. And where we are with structural, um, like what he, what he mentioned, he, he said something about education, right? That one we are... We, yes, we, so, so it's retrogressive. We are having a lot more people that are not even going to school at all, unlike before where the numbers were limited. So what do you expect from a, 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 a large population of uneducated people? Of course, banditry would increase. But my only worry is when you were in the position of authority, what were you able to do? And I mean, exactly. all these things, you should have said it whilst you were in the position and to be able so to that's change my things. Problem, Uwa. Yes. That is my problem. My problem is not the fact of the realities that stare us in the face. My problem is that these problems are not new. These things that you're mentioning are not new. You were, it was easy for you to coast and be promising us and saying the thing to me. You tell us you have killed Boko Haram, you have tarnished Boko Haram. All of a sudden, you're no longer there. The problems are now revealed to you. And you're now giving us a, a timeline. But you see, we keep saying that if a, if a crime lingers for too long, there are real big stakeholders that are holding, making sure that that crime continues. And this Boko Haram is one of those crimes that I think that if they do proper investigation, you will find that military officials, government officials, all of them, they have their hands involved. Well, and this who is, is going to do that investigation? If the person that was in charge of doing that investigation and told us what he told us mm. is now changing and telling mm. us another thing. Mm -hmm. Well, please, let's take your news. <laughs> and again, they are, and, and again it's, so, it's so sad that they are even thinking about nominating him for this ambassadorial, uh, what's it called? Uh, exactly. position you know because exactly. you see what i'm saying that i have mixed emotions it's sad for me it's upsetting as in i really can't place you know how i feel about this news and i feel about what he's saying and when he's saying it yeah all right so yesterday uh, was yeah i think it was yesterday i took the, the story that the um the governor of niger state had said that he was not going to negotiate with um terrorists Right, that he was not going to negotiate with bandits uh, because if you pay ransom to bandits, what you're further doing is giving them money to be able to buy ammunitions, right? And I, I said, oh wow, that's yes. a fantastic idea. So it means that okay, they're going to find a different um, strategy to be able to recover or um, uh, get back the people that were abducted. But you know, today, to my shock, um, the Kagara ab abduction. It says negotiation negotiation at final stage. Says the Niger governor. So if you read the story, the um, Abu Bakr Bello, governor of Niger State, says that um, the government is at the final stage of negotiating the, re the release uh, of the persons abducted at Kagara. And he was saying that at the moment, there is no, um, no, no, let me pick the part where he said that 
people in, in collaboration with the bandits. Uh, let me see here. He said, arrangements and consultations are ongoing between the governor, government of Niger and the bandits for the purpose of releasing the abducted persons. So at the moment, there are no additional information apart from the one we have, ha we have at hand. Our priority is to make sure that we bring back the students safe. Things are speculated or rumored, but we cannot work with these, um, at this, uh, at, with these at situations like this, he said. So the governor urged the parents and the families of the victim to be hopeful that everything uh, possible was being done to be able to bring back the abducted people. So I'm just wondering what kind of negotiation will be ongoing with the bandits. If you had already told us yesterday that, you know, paying ransom, because what would, they, what would a bandit be asking for? What would the, uh, the bandits be asking for if it is not ransom money? I don't understand what kind of mm. negotiation he's talking about, that they're, talking, uh, they're consulting um, both the bandits and the government. So I don't know. It, because it just, for me, when I just saw this, I just got a bit, you know, uh, I thought yesterday you just said you were not going to pay ransom because you're further giving them, I mean, you're giving them mon money to be able to buy more ammunition. So I think this, this um, crime, the situation of insecurity and crime in Nigeria, right, is something that our leaders need to be honest with themselves and truly true because the, if they really want to fish these people out. See, I, I, I used to say this thing in Nigeria, don't think that you are above the, this in the radar of uh, the police or whatever. If they really mean you and they want, to, they want to sniff you out, they will bring you out. So I don't understand how all these years have gone by and we are not able to pin, you know, put, uh, uh, nip this insecurity in the board. Instead, it's going, it's escalating. And that is why somebody like a Boratai will say that it will take, I mean, 20 years, I will not be able to fight Boko Haram because he understands. The more you let it to linger, it is not going to be, so it, it, it will keep expanding, right? It will keep getting bigger. So it will get to the point that even you yourself, you will not be able to contain it. So it is only natural for you to say that 20 years time, we will not be able to fight it, you know? Because it doesn't stay in one place. It keeps growing. It will not, it will not remain small. Well, so well, see, if it was another man that was talking about this, so maybe Minister of Information or something else, I would even, I would even say, okay, fine. You're talking about the person that was put in charge of stemming this menace. So we're not just talking about an ordinary person. We're talking about the person that was in the epicenter. Yeah. So all these things that you are telling us, why didn't you tell us then? Why didn't you tell us then? Let us all tighten our belts and say, okay, this is, what, this is how long it's going to take. Mm. You were so hopeful. Every time you came out and you had the opportunity you know, to talk to the press, it was full of hope. You were telling us how you had, you know, you had, in fact, tarnished their memory. Okay, you're just going to mop up. You're going to just make everything all right. So that's that's my concern. That's okay, really sad. how come? Because you're now on the other side of the fence. It's so it's easy very for you to easy say for you yeah. to see everything that is wrong. Yeah, you get. As for is that not all we all do? It's really, it's really, really heartbreaking. Just force talk about these things and how they keep going and. You know, you now balance all the conspiracy theories that we have been hearing, mm -hmm. okay? And you're trying to make sense of everything. You know, it's just, it's just mind-boggling. It's really, really upsetting. Absolutely. Really, really distressing. It's really sad. And I just hope that, you know, I just hope and pray that we're able to overcome this. But it takes willpower. The government must be ready to, to really, really fight this thing for it to work. All right, so that's all we can take on what's in the news. When we come back from the break, we'll be discussing the grief and the gains of Forex trading. Stay with us. We'll be right back.